Hey everyone, welcome to Cloud Conversations. It's been a while. Um, hey, Azure, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Peter? I'm good. I'm good. As we record this, it's been a very hot week in the UK. We've had a heat wave, unprecedented temperatures of um, up to 40 degrees Celsius, which I think is over 100 in, in uh -huh. Fahrenheit, which uh -huh. is, for us Brits, is really uncomfortable. I, I mean, heard that y'all broke some records, um, like yeah. global records. Oh, 100, it's 104 degrees Fahrenheit for our dumber friends, including myself. I had to go look it up. <laughs> and me. And me. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> <laughs> but it's... It's a lovely temperature today, actually. It's much better. In fact, let me just okay. find out what the temperature is right now. As we My heart went out to y'all because I know you're not used to those type of temperatures. Like here, getting yeah. up to 40 is, is not unusual during the summer. Mm. But we also have air conditioning, so which we don't. Yeah. Which you don't, yeah. So I, um, I, I felt for, I felt for all of you because I, those are dangerous temperatures too for mm. folks on any part of the age spectrum, right? Young, yeah, whatever. So, yeah. How did Absolutely. you and the family fare? It was challenging to be sure, um, because. The house, the houses that we live in in the UK, especially if it's a new build house like ours is, they are built to be really well insulated and retain heat. So it's really difficult keeping them cool without aircon. Um, so we got lots of fans out and yeah. okay. did what we could, but uh, yeah. and, and and didn't wear layers of clothes. I mean, it's it's 17 degrees today, so it's changed really quickly. And that's a I, huge thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't wear long sleeves. Often, I'm normally in a short sleeve t-shirt, but it was really chilly in the office here today, and I've had this on all day. So, and it's really rare for me. So it's changed so quickly from one extreme to the other. Whew, I'm glad it's over. I'm very glad it's over for, yeah. for you all. So. We Brits moan about the weather so, so much though. And I saw a really <laughs> cool video. Um, it was this lady sort of acting out how we Brits are about weather. Uh, and she was acting out the whole scenario of, uh, oh, the weather's going to be great this week. Um, oh, isn't this a beautiful day? Isn't it wonderful? We'll go out to the to the beach and we'll get some sun and, and all that. And then it cuts to her very shortly afterwards saying, oh, it's too hot to do anything. We can't cope with this. It's, oh, it's awful. Will I ever be cool again? And then she's standing in a refrigerator saying, please rain, please rain. Did you see the video going around about the guy who was having a bin cocktail? A in bin UK? cocktail? Yes, no. okay. We're going to no. have to drop this in the show notes, but a, a colleague of mine who's in the UK sent me this link about a man who is in his garbage bin has i'm assuming he cleaned it out i really hope he yeah, did yeah. um yeah. But it's a green bin he's filled it with water he's got mm -hmm. a step ladder so he can get in and he's having a cocktail and his neighbor is like what are you what are you doing and he's like you're you're just harping on me for you know like having a bin cocktail like can a man be in his own garbage bin kind of thing and the, the comments are hysterical uh somebody was like leave the man alone and let him have his bin and tonic and it was <laughs> we will have to ch i'll have to ch check that out and have a look and we will have to share that definitely it sounds amazing yes is it <laughs> is it one of those gr green you said it's a green bin is it like one of those wheel wheelie bins yes yes it's a green bin with a black lid yeah yeah and he's got he's so i think i was reading that's for composting maybe is that correct oh, in the UK? it I varies it, it depends on what area you're in because gotcha. okay. where i used to live we had three bins we had a green one for general yes. waste we had a blue one for recycling and a brown yes. one for garden okay. but yeah. now where we live it's just completely different so it depends where you are yeah <laughs> that's that's what that's what he was in just i guess like a city or a municipal like provided bin and just drinking his his cocktail <laughs> getting progressively angrier as his neighbor is filming <sighs> him uh yeah okay i yeah i'll 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 pass this along we'll put it in the show notes but i was like this is the uk version of florida man i don't know if y'all know the reputation about florida man oh no, no who's that oh okay in the states um 
there's always new, wild news articles that come out about like Florida man does something. And so a fun exercise, if you Google Florida man on your birthday, there's guaranteed to be an article about something that a Florida man did. And so uh, like on my birthday, it's like Florida man rides mm -hmm. jet ski on highway. Um, there's, they're just really dumb stories. I swear it's the heat that maybe cooks Florida people's brains. And I'm saying that as a Floridian, like I, I was born and raised in Orlando. Um, there's some strange people there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the strange people wherever you go in the this world. This is true. They have a reputation here in the States. Like Florida people are just some other caliber. I don't know if like the, the South doesn't actually claim Florida as a, as a state. So when mm. they talk about the South, it's just flirts its own little entity off to the side. So, uh, oh, there you go. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was a wild tangent. <laughs> no, <Just> well. <laughs> for our listeners, we had no idea what the what this actual show was going to be about. Like Pete mentioned, we're on a hiatus. It's, I guess it was kind of nice to have a sort of like a summer break, but we had some folks who yeah. needed to reschedule. So that's why we've been on bit of a break yeah it's been nice to have that sort of organic unplanned break because we didn't plan plan for this but it just it's the way it worked out and uh and, and we've not seen Rue on here for a very long time don't worry Rue's still with us um he's just had loads going on lately he's been super busy um and cat as we record this cat's off to get married next week in vegas so ooh, yeah, whoop, whoop. so excited um so so that, that, that's awesome. Congratulations to Kat and Craig. If, if um, well, you won't be listening to this. You'll be off getting married. I too much fun. I hope they're not listening to this. <laughs> you, you, yeah, yeah. Very, very sad honeymoon if you are. But... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to feel connected to us still. Yeah, but... yeah. But, um, but we decided we would get together and do cloud conversations unplanned and it literally is unplanned we we have no idea where this is going to go there was a couple of little ideas that we <laughs> talked about but uh and before we started recording we just both decided let's just record it see what happens it's i'll warn you now if you're here for tech there's probably going to be very little in the way of tech talk um <laughs> so if you <laughs> if you're looking for a serious tech focused podcast um i don't think you're in the right place go back and, and look for today one one tech thing okay well, one oh, tech yeah thing. okay oh uh um, and it was a really stupid one so a uh, really stupid mistake i put a, a tweet up this morning about you know like good morning to everyone except the syntax error in my flow this morning uh, <laughs> because sometimes it'd be your own flows that embarrass you uh mm. and humble you and it should have known better than to spell i was working on a on a header and i spelled application with three p's and i feel like flow should have known that i was Ooh. not trying to be a rapper um, <laughs> publication and uh, <laughs> I was I was a little mad at that. It actually took a colleague to review what I was writing because like it's failed eight times, and he was like, "Sure, I know you've not gotten much sleep, so we're gonna let this one slide." <laughs> but you've got three P's in here, and I was like, "You know what?" embarrassed me so there's your one piece of tech talk for today one piece of tech talk one That's piece of it. tech talk the code will um, embarrass you um, yeah we just can't help talking tech because i've just thought of something that happened this past week it was microsoft inspire as well did you catch any of that i did not and i have to be honest i didn't see anything about inspire on twitter until after the fact i did not know it was happening right so i don't I don't know what I didn't subscribe to or what announcements <laughs> I missed. So yeah, well, you I can go back and see it all on demand. Yeah, it's all it's all good. Because yeah. um, I, I can't tell you anything that would be of interest to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I heard there was stuff about Viva because a, a friend of mine was talking about Viva. She works in a like CRM type um, uh, non-Microsoft CRM kind of stuff and sales. And she was like, oh, yeah, there's some integrations. I was like, That's cool. Uh, but yeah, I'll catch it on demand that'll be my fun thing for this weekend yeah definitely but don't do your fun thing for this weekend or you gotta you gotta do something more than that um uh okay i'll find something <laughs> <laughs> oh. so what would you say has been the highlight of your week this week then 
breaking my week-long insomnia streak. And then suddenly everything that I was working on, just like clicking because you get a good night's sleep. Um, oh, wow. So that was, that was good. That was yeah. I think that's been the highlight of my week. Ooh, I started, I love the ceremony of making coffee in the morning. Mm. Um, and I love all different sorts of coffee. And right now I've been drinking a, um, it's a frozen coffee capsule called, uh, it's a brand called Comatier. I got like a promotional thing. Um, yeah. decided to try it, but it's like flash frozen coffee concentrate. Um, and I love this company because they're sustainable and everything is recyclable. Like even their packaging, they ship in cardboard and do dry ice. So not mm -hmm. even like ice, you know, plastic ice packs. Yeah. Um, so it really appealed to me. Anyway, I've been making the coffee in the morning and started putting it in a stemless wine glass, like making an ice latte mm. in a stemless wine glass and buying whipped cream in the can. And I oh. can't tell you the last time I bought whipped cream in a can, like I keep whipping cream like around for baking. Yeah. Um, and it has elevated like my week. And then today I put it in a whiskey sniffer because oh, look at that. It was, it looks a little messy now because the whipped cream's all kind of curdled. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that this morning because I have whiskey sniffers, but that I don't drink whiskey out of. They are more like decorative bowls and cups for me. So I'll put like brownie sundaes and yogurt parfaits. <laughs> 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 I was oh. gifted these from a friend whose grandmother passed away. And when she knew I was moving, uh, mm. she's like, could you use glassware and just handed me a box. And as I'm unpacking, like, I don't, I don't keep whiskey in my house. So I guess these are just going to be fancy cups. So long, long winded story, but my coffee tastes better with whipped cream in oh. a whiskey sniffer or wine glass. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. That is a cool way to start your day. And you've got to find in every day something that's just going to make you smile like that. Just give yourself a little treat. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like small rituals that, um, improve your quality of life or get your day started or ended on a good note um, definitely yeah definitely. What's you said been... oh go sorry, on, sorry. Go ahead. no you do it no no no. you go you go because i was going to ask <laughs> you about what the highlight of your week was and then ah, like, right, okay. what a, a ritual that helps you get through the day or Ooh. things that you like to do okay we shall do that we shall come back to that what i was gonna okay. say was something you mentioned in relation to your beverage there made me think of a really fun topic that I always like talking about and it's words that you don't like and you mentioned the word curdled and I hate that word so much for some reason noted have you got any <laughs> words that you just you don't like Ooh, that's not to say you shouldn't I... say it I don't mind you saying it I just oh no no no, no. Like I'm another, thinking an... um like some people don't like the word moist or panties like i don't yes that's the sort right? of thing that's the sort of thing are... moist and i can't is a... yeah i can't think of they don't particularly bother me <laughs> but yeah you know what we'll come back to that if i think of something that i really have an aversion to I'll, yeah I'll yeah now. it's so illogical isn't it why we why we are offended <laughs> by sounds of words but i really just don't like that word curdled mm -hmm. louise will tell me oh the milk is curdled and I'm like, oh, don't say that um what do you use instead one... of curdled then um there is no alternative to be fair like think of but i just don't like that word um it's like pamper. i don't like the word pamper either <laughs> you don't like the word i'm like, strange in, like... i'm a strange Pamper in terms of like, okay, here in the States, it's a brand of babies, like nappies. Um, so like pamper Ooh. in terms of like well, taking care of yourself or like the yes, diaper? Yes, the latter. Okay. The latter. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to treat myself to a good pamper day. I'm like, oh no, I just yeah. really don't like that for some reason. I, I don't know why, Ooh. but it's great. It just grates on me. But we have pampers nappies here as well. Okay. Um, okay. And it's funny that you call them nappies actually, because I would have thought you might have called them diet diapers. Do you call them nappies? There, diapers. Yeah. Look, I'm picking up some, I'm picking up some, um, some UK words um i'm trying to be cultured here yeah <laughs> absolutely well we might come back to that because before we came on air i was telling you a bit of a fun game that i had in mind where i might read out some british words and see if you know what they are but before we do that we must get back to what you asked me um which was what helped 
what helps me get through my day and what's highlight of my week, wasn't it? Yes. Um, okay. I do, there is nothing, it's kind of the same as, well, as yours, which is a bit of a cop out really, but there is nothing quite like that first morning coffee. I absolutely love that. It really just helps me to start my day. I wake up and I'm, I'm like a zombie. I'm like, oh, get me to a cup of coffee. And I absolutely love that first cup. No cup for the rest of the day is as good as that first cup of coffee. But the thing I really like doing, it's two of my favorite times are like first in the morning and, and, and late at night. Um, and before I go to sleep, I really like to wind down by just putting my headphones on, um, laying down and, and listening to a really good podcast of, 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 of something. Mm. It can be anything. It can be tech. It can be, um, it can be uh, sports related or light life, mental health, anything like that. Or um, if, if Rue were here, we, Rue and I share a passion for the, the old professional wrestling. We both love that. So we listen to some of that. Um, <laughs> so. And that just really helps me wind down at the end of the day. And I'll quite often find myself ooh, dozing off and ooh, time to time to switch the headphones off and go to sleep. And that is so, so cool. Um, so that really, really helps me to unwind. But highlight of the week, um, I would have to say would be the end of the heat wave. <laughs> just when it, was, when it went cool again. <laughs> I think oh that's a God. good one. I think that's a great one. A friend of mine tweeted, he's like, if my demos don't work during, you know, like a, a user group meetup, can I blame the UK mm. heat wave? And I was like, yeah, just blow on the <laughs> wires. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's a yeah. perfectly acceptable excuse. Y'all I was on a meeting. Baking. <laughs> oh my God. And I was in this office. Uh, I had my door open. I was trying to get it cool any way I could. And I was on my surface on a Teams meeting. And the surface was just rapidly getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, and I was trying, and I was on mute, and it was my turn to speak. And I pressed the mute button, and nothing happened. I, I couldn't get it off mute. So I'm like semaphore waving, like, I can't speak. I'll be right back. Miming. Like, so. <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding this so funny. <laughs> and then, yeah, so I, I get my work phone and I go on, on Teams on, on the work phone and, and, and get back onto the meeting. And then uh, I start making everyone dizzy because I'm standing up and I'm pacing around, just walking up and down the, the office. And they was like, can you just sit still for a minute, Peter? Because <laughs> you're just moving around too much. Because uh, I do that. I like to pace if I'm not set up my... I'm so restless. Your desk. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag UK yeah. heat wave making you do some other sort of rituals. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But um, but yeah, it's been it's been an interesting week. We've had all sorts of weather, boiling hot, much chillier today. Hence the long sleeves, which I I never wear long sleeves. I'm I'm usually in short sleeves, so it's it shows you how much cooler it's got today. Um, but I'm mighty relieved, and I, I'm, I'm hoping we don't get too much heat like that again and for a while yet. Um, yeah. But that, that clip I was talking about the lady sort of complaining about the weather, um, at, at the very end of the clip, she, well, once she's been just complaining endlessly about how hot it is and, oh, I'm never going to be cool again, and then when it's over and back to temperatures like today, she's like going, huh, so that's it. That was our summer. <laughs> <laughs> We're never happy. Uh, <laughs> I can, I can send you for... just like a like a little a little bit of summer, just slightly. Yeah. Worse, like wearing a jacket, you can see I'm yeah. I'm wearing a, a sleeveless a sleeveless dress, but I also keep my my house. So I live I live in a townhouse, um, and it's got three levels. So I've got like a basement, and the basement is always super cool, um, mm. but the ac unit really controls i guess like the middle level so there's like a 10 degree difference from my basement to here yeah. um and i normally keep it a little bit warmer during during the day for me mm. hold on let me let me type this into the the googs I'm like oh my Google reference machine. Point. i was like i know what 25 celsius is from science but above that i'm i'm a little fuzzy so let's see like uh, let's see my ideal temperature is about a... 28 degrees Celsius. See, that's still pretty hot for us. 
Um, yeah. It's yeah, it's about seventeen right now, and that's just right for me. I like um, I like a nice bright sunny day, about about this temperature with a bit of a breeze. A bit of a breeze is mm. really nice. Um, I would take on the it, occasions take I've a... been over to the states, I I found it m quite warm in most of the places in the states I've been. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a funny one weather, isn't it? And we Do are not scared up for humidity? any sort of weather. Recently, we have, and I think a lot of this okay. is coming from climate change. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, because it's just really humid a lot of the time. And over the past couple of years, we've had a lot of humidity building up, pressure, 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 and then we get a, a thunderstorm and it clears, and then yep. it's nice and cool yep. again. So yep, that's like us. It's pretty. Never common, used to be like though. that in this country. Yeah, yeah. but it's slowly yeah. getting hotter and. And the winters are getting less harsh because we used to get quite extreme winters at times. And I can't mm. remember the last time we had one. Probably mm. about 10 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, was the last bad winter we had was really deep snow. But we're never prepared for any sort of weather in this country. We, we're just not geared for it because if it gets too hot, our houses don't have air conditioning because we only get like a couple of weeks heat wave once every few years. So we don't really need it. But boy, do we need it when it gets hot. And then when it's snowy and the roads are icy where we're just we never prepared for that and friends yeah. that i've got over in sort of mainland europe like sweden and the places like that they always laugh at us and saying well you don't have your winter tires you're not prepared for it it's like <laughs> so that's pretty rubbish all around i think <laughs> that's, i mean that's kind of similar here too because my parents live about three and a half hours four hours south of me and they got more snow in the past year or two then I've gotten here in, in Maryland, like DC area, and it's, mm -hmm. we're not prepared really. We always joke that we've got like one snowplow that kind of, you know, helps everybody out. But like, mm -hmm. if there's a, if there's more than a few inches of snow, then we're really not prepared for that. I remember one, one year, uh, maybe like four or five years ago, we got I want to say like two to three feet. And that's like, we're not prepared really for that. If it's a widespread kind of snow, my parents, where they live, snow usually doesn't happen. I mean, I remember a few snows mm. as like a teenager, um, but it would be like, you know, two inches and then they cancel school because they just normally didn't really get it. Um, and so they want, you know, they don't have the like infrastructure in place to have, you know, a bunch of snow plows. Like, and it doesn't make sense to invest in a ton if it really doesn't snow that much anyway. Uh, but yeah, sim similar, I would yeah, say exactly. it's pretty similar. Yeah, they're they're better prepared here. Um, but like we wouldn't be able to handle like the volume of snow that say like New York gets or Connecticut or, you know, further up north. We have, mm. we can handle a couple of snows. And then I remember one year we like ran out of road salt. So they were just like, everybody stay home. <laughs> until <it melts>. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, okay, we've, <laughs> we've talked about, I, maybe we've talked about weather enough, but weather, it's a thing. <laughs> well, we, we Brits could talk about weather endlessly. It's our favorite subject. <laughs> um, well, my, my, when I was younger, my parent, there was a weekly weather forecast on the BBC when I was younger. On a Sunday, there was the, I mean, you had it every day on every news bulletin, but on a Sunday afternoon after lunch, there was like the big weekly weather report. And literally, I was not allowed to speak when that where the report was on with my parents they were glued to it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah parents are obsessed with weather but i'm not me, you're um, not yet so yeah yet not yet maybe, maybe not yet maybe not yet my Have um my, my father-in-law is obsessed with weather he, he loves weather he loves uh, maybe there's like a threshold like you hit a point and then you're like ah, then you're obsessed. have you seen mm -hmm. um hold up before uh Maybe it'll hit me next week because I'm 50 next week. I'm gonna. I was gonna say maybe. maybe I don't know. Do you do you take on any mannerisms of your parents? My my thought process was like you haven't yet started talking about the weather. There's an insurance company in the states called Progressive that does these really funny commercials mm -hmm. about you turning into your like your parents. Um, and oh, so yeah. they have like little like uh, group therapy sessions to be like, no, we don't need that live, laugh, love sign, like put it away. Or, you know, maybe it's wearing the 
pants that your dad did and they're like all high waisted now <laughs> or yeah, <laughs> in your yeah. case maybe it's the weather <laughs> and you need to go mm. maybe when I am hits. definitely becoming more like my dad the older I get there is no doubt about that no yeah. doubt about that because <laughs> one of the thing my, my dad is so great um and he's god he's going he's going great guns because he's, he's 85 years old my dad and, wow. and he's probably still fitter than me He's probably still fitter than me, and he he looks great for his age. Okay, and he's got mad professor sort of frizzy hair out here. Not that I'm wanting to talk these days. I've with this going on, but um, but he can talk and talk and talk, my dad, and he'll tell you stories. Uh, and even if you, his dad, I, you've told me this one before, but then he'll ignore you that you said that and just retell it anyway so you've got to listen to it all over again <laughs> um but he goes off on tangents which i know i do as well because louise tells me she said you know just get to the point peter you start a sentence and that sentence was painful for you getting to the end of it have you... oh and she's right she's not wrong she's not wrong have you heard of a sh have you heard of a t tv show from th this side of the pond it's called dairy girls yes i have but i've not watched it yeah, it is so, so good. It's about, it's based in Northern Ireland in the 90s during the, the time of the Troubles when everything was going on with the IRA and all that and and, and how they got to the, the peace agreement that eventually came in. Um, but there's a character in that show. He's the uncle of the family. It's 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 about these girls who go to the school, basically, but they've got a, the wider family. I'm doing it already. I'm doing what this character does. I'm going off on a tangent. And he's called Uncle Colum. And he starts a sentence and he'll just, He's just the most boring, tedious man. And he goes off on these tangents and he'll say things like, um, I was just talking to John over there, you, um, you know, when he was just saying, uh, you know, John, of course, he a uh, lovely fella. And um, his mother, you might remember, used to work at this bank down the road. And um, she was crippled with the old gallstone. She was um, there, there, no laughing matter. And then they're interrupting him, say, for God's sake, Uncle Colin, what did John actually say? <laughs> and I'm... I know I'm like that. It's just, I'm becoming that. <laughs> you are just so setting like the full <laughs> scene, Peter. Like that's it. Like you have, <laughs> you had to be there. You're, you're just setting the atmosphere. Mm. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is such a good show though. If you get the chance to watch it, I really encourage you to watch it because- the, I wrote it down. The girls are sort of teenage. Yeah, they, they go to a uh, religious school in Northern Ireland and there's four main female characters and randomly one boy who is British in, and, he, and he has to go to this girl's school because they're afraid if he goes to the, the boys' school in, in Northern Ireland, they'll beat him up because he's English. <laughs> so he has to go to the girls' school. <laughs> so... <laughs> but it's so good. And the headmistress of the school is this um, nun called Sister Michael and she is just the best character you just oh you, you gotta check it out it's so funny <laughs> okay i wrote it down i'm taking my my uh i have a hard time deciding on what to watch and maybe i've mentioned this before about our i think we have talked about this before about ah if it's more than a couple of seasons like i can't get myself invested into mm. it to watch you know it, it's i'm i'm notorious for starting a show and then not finishing it and be somehow being okay with that. Mm. Um, and the example my boyfriend and I were talking about recently was Breaking Bad because I got through, I, I oh, watched yeah, yeah. everything and got to season four and was like, I'm done. And, have, and this was a couple of years ago and I never went back to watch yep. it. And I was okay with not seeing the ending. Um, I recently, I, I like K-dramas, um, Korean dramas, and there is one oh no 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 sorry it wasn't that but i do that occasionally too it was bridgerton that's what it was um oh, started watching season yeah. two yes so good but when season two came out i had covid and i fell asleep during the last episode and i still haven't seen the last episode i'm assuming somebody got married you know like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah now funny you should mention bridgerton because louise watches that i've not seen it but one of the girl one of the main female characters in derry girls is actually in bridgerton uh, oh, I couldn't, really? I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't tell Ooh, you which one she is. But, okay. Yeah, but um, but yeah, she's she's one of the okay. the main characters in Bridgerton apparently. Oh and snap! I'll have to oh give it a watch. yeah! Oh she yeah Nicola. No, sorry, I've got this split across two screens. Cow Cowlin? Is that you? Coughlin? 
That sounds about right. Yeah. Italian. Yeah. She. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's a huge character in Bridgerton. Uh, she plays a uh, Penelope. Is it Penelope? Penelope. Yeah. Penelope Featherington. That's yeah. Yeah. What a great name, Ooh. Penelope Featherington. Ooh. Okay. I I really liked her in Bridgerton. Um, she makes you really hate the character. So she did her acting Ooh. incredibly well. Yeah. Okay, I so I'm, I'm definitely gonna watch Dairy Girls. Yeah, you're like, oh, I, I, yeah. I hate her, but I know that this is the character and not the mm. actress. But yeah, you know they're doing such a good job when they make you feel that way when you just yes. want to punch them. Right? It, <laughs> you really... you, de you definitely want to punch this character. So mm. if you if you get a chance to watch Bruderton. Go, go for it, Peter. Go for it. I will definitely do it. It's on my list. There's a few things I need to catch up with. Louise tells me, you got to watch this. you got to watch it. And um, we have very dis different tastes. Dis some, some things we like to watch. Uh, and we never watch anything together anymore because we don't, we don't actually have a TV anymore in the house. Okay. We, we got rid of it because it was never on. And, and now we just watch what we want to watch when we want to watch it on our laptops. Sure. And, yeah. and that works. Um, we did get a little projector. Um, which we could project a movie Ooh, under the wall, but yeah. we and, and we were invested in that idea, but it it wasn't a really good one, so we sent it back, meaning to get a better one. But we need to do our homework mm -hmm. and get a good one, and then mm -hmm. we'll probably bring movie night back at some point, yeah. um, if cool. Oliver allows. It all depends on what Oliver allows us in this house. <laughs> <laughs> but, He's the um, boss. Oh, That's no doubt about it. No <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> I, I am the furthest thing from the boss in this house. I, I am the I, I'm the last of importance. <laughs> you're you're an employee. You just work pretty there. much. Yeah, I, I I pretty much <laughs> do whatever everyone tells me. I do what Louise tells me. I do what Oliver tells me, and I show for George anywhere he wants to go. Um, hey, Dad, can you take me to play football with my mates? Yeah, it doesn't matter that I'm working. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just go and do it. Well, it's I've a good thing you work now. from home, right? And it is you a, have a flexible work works. schedule, so you can just be his personal chauffeur. You want to come it's over here and do that for me too? I can do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to being dad's taxis, is, is what I call myself. <laughs> okay, I, I accept this. I was the taxi for my, my parents uh, last week, so they are in California right now visiting my mom's sister. And it was a little too expensive to fly out of their local airport. So they drove up here and, you know, I, I drove them to the airport here out of D.C. Mm. My dad kept calling me the boober, um, which I thought the was boober. really funny. The, the boober. Oh, the Uber. Uber. <laughs> the yeah, rideshare yeah. app. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, slight tech thing. Um, hmm? So I have been like revamping. If people, I know people who watch this will be like, oh, maybe her, her room looks a little bit different. I'm yeah. in the process of setting up my office space. And so I flipped my room tangent at the same time as like I bought new monitors. Um, I've been wanting to do some work from elsewhere. And sometimes I go on business trips and then end up having one monitor screen. And there is an Instagram account that I follow um, mm. for a, a Google programmer. Her name is uh, tech.unicorn. And so she does a lot of work from elsewhere work and had recommended she has these portable monitors, which I didn't even know were really a thing until very recently. Um, tech unicorn. I'm still going to look Yeah, I think it's tech, tech dot unicorn. I know her name is tech unicorn for sure, but I think there's a dot in there. Um, but oh, she, she yeah. Delia, very, coding yeah, in trouble. Yeah, she's wonderful. Let's, I love her stuff. Her yeah. She, um, has portable monitors that uh, like attach to the side of your laptop. So you've got th like three screens. You can get one or you can get two. So then you end up having like your laptop screen and then two on either side. And so I bought some and a girlfriend of mine did too. We follow the same account. And she was like, I was looking at getting these and invested in those. And my dad was doing some work from elsewhere in while he's in California. And so he gets to use these for the first time, which I'm really jealous about. Um, okay. <laughs> that he got to play with my toy first and I did yeah. not, but he was, uh, he, we put them together cause they arrived last Friday. My parents arrived on Saturday. And so we were, I was like, I don't know how to hook these up, but they use like a USB C port hmm. on your computer. And then if you've got an extra port, you can use both, like both 
monitors need a power source. So if you don't, then you just like plug it into a wall. They provide a little adapter for you with the screens. But he was like, it feels like I'm flying a rocket ship because this man wanted to box up a 27 inch monitor and take it as a carry on on a plane with Ooh. him <laughs> across the country. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was random tangent tech thing. Um, <laughs> portable monitors, people. Pretty cool. I felt cool getting some. Well, I hope he gives them Yeah, back. they were definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh, I love it. I love a good gadget. I don't. I don't get enough gadgets anymore. Although I did, I just, I did have to replace my MacBook this week. All right, um, little MacBook. Um, yeah. <laughs> was unexpected um but i had a bit of an accident with my old macbook which sadly was only two years old it was oh. it was not not very far through its life and oh. because heat wave again back to the weather it was oh. too hot to sleep upstairs so i slept downstairs a couple of nights this week on the sofa just because it was just way too hot upstairs um and as i say i like to listen to podcasts before going to bed and i, oh. I played i was playing it on my laptop and um headphones on and then oh i'm getting sleepy now i'll go i'll shut the laptop off i put it on the floor next to me on, on the sofa i hadn't realized <laughs> that, that there was a water bottle on the floor very near and during the night i must have kicked the water bottle over and i wake up in the next morning and literally the the laptop open it's like a tidal wave comes out of it it's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I did not laugh. I thought the story was going where you forgot the laptop. There were a couple of things. I was like, one, oh, you left the podcast on all night and the computer just like overheated. Then mm -hmm. as the story kept going, I was like, oh no, he put it on the floor and you squished it. Um, and mm. then it was water that ended up being it. I was like, this had it had so many twists. It had so many head. possibilities, didn't it? it? Did. Yeah, I could it really, I, really I could have did. stood on it. You're quite right. And um, and I and yeah, I would have probably damaged it pretty badly doing that because I've got oh, huge... Louise always says I've got Hobbit feet because I've got a big size <laughs> eleven feet. So I probably, <laughs> yeah, I probably would have squashed it. But it was water. So um, but yeah, I tried to save it. I left it for about forty eight hours. Yeah, and, in, a, yeah. in a dry place, but. It's it's well and truly um, broken. It's it's not coming back to life. So I can't. So I thought this is just uh, fate's way of telling me to get a new one. Um, so I did, and I ordered Hashtag one from treat yourself. Apple Store, and it is my birthday coming up this week. So oh, I um, happy I thought, birthday. Why the hell not? It's uh, yeah. my birthday. Thank you. It's my birthday on the twentieth, and I will be the big five zero. Big, mm, you have any big plans? Um, not as yet. We're okay. gonna wing it. Um, I wing most things in life, to be honest, <laughs> including this show <laughs> <laughs> that we're doing right now. Completely unplanned. It this works out more really and more well. My mantra, um, because um, it'll all depend on where Oliver is and when, when, when mm. what, if he's with us or whether with when with his grandparents. Um, we might get out for a meal. We might get something. But uh, we shall see. We shall see. I'm very easily pleased. I'd be probably happy just with the Domino's pizza. That would probably do me. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Whatever you come up with, you'll have to update us next podcast. Let us know what you did for your birthday. Because yeah, I'd be definitely. very interested to know, too. I hope it's oh. a phenomenal birthday. And I'm, so. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> they always are. I Yeah. Yeah. The good thing about my birthday is the company I work for, they give you a birthday off. It's sort of like a mandatory holiday. That's so, so that's sweet. really cool. Yeah. Oh, so God. I'm only working three days next week because the, another great thing about this company I work for is they also give you every other Friday off. They call it a nine day fortnight. So we work five days, then four days, five days, then four days. Okay. Um, and we, we make up the time. We make up the right. hours during the, the rest of the, but it's, um, it's something we've been doing a while now, and it is so good, so good. A girlfriend um, so... of mine works for a government contractor who does that as well, and she says it's really changed, like, her life in general. Like, she's got a toddler as well, and she's like, it's mm. really nice that – because if you need to do, you know, schedule a doctor's appointment, like if you're off on that Friday, you don't need to worry about it. She's like, she gets, she feels more relaxed knowing that she's got a three day weekend every other week. Um, mm. And she feels like she's more productive as well, just because 
she knows she's going to have a day off. So that's definitely that's it's cool. it makes such a difference. It's so so good um so we're all really happy with it and it's it's, it's been great it was trial for three months and and when we were like please make this a permanent thing and thankfully uh our, our wonderful leadership team did so uh, I love we are really that. we are really grateful really grateful so my dad's company um for the month of i think he said for the month of august is they're doing not quite full day friday like off but they're oh. giving them half day Fridays off, I think, every Friday for oh, cool. like the month, which I was like, that's really nice too. Yeah. Just, hmm. Yeah. Some places I used to work when I used to I used to work in manufacturing quite a bit, manufacturing okay. companies back in the day. And I and they would have early finishes on a Friday. So you would okay. go in on the Friday morning. Yeah. And you would start quite early. You would have to be in work for like 745 mm -hmm. um, every day. But then you got the Friday afternoon because of that which is really nice early finish long weekend you need to adopt more things like that i mm. also should could do that myself in some ways um maybe not every other friday but i i do need to start taking like random days just like here and there just because so yeah i'm going to i'm going to do i'm going to do that definitely definitely you can make it work make it work that's oh that made me think of that guy that fashion guy that you've got in the states what's he called tim gunn make it work tim gunn make it okay i will yeah. channel my inner tim gunn and start putting some days <laughs> on the calendar one of my colleagues she said she takes off the friday of a long weekend and i was like oh that's actually pretty smart too and these things just don't pop into my brain mm. uh, i normally if i if i if i'm out of town i'll take off like for the weekend i will take off like that monday um but i was like ooh, having a four-day weekend is kind of ingenious too when there is a holiday so things to things to think about i'm always looking for stuff like x <laughs> definitely yeah we're giving you some ideas here something to think about yeah, but thank you. speaking thank of you. ideas though you're remodeling which is awesome and you must keep us posted on that it's making me think that i need to do some more with this office space because i've been in here a while now and there's still a few things i want to do but one of the things i got recently you've if you see it there i got a record player <sighs> It's Which been on little, my wish list to get yeah, one too. Ooh, final turntable. Love it. Love and it. And I found some of my old record collection from the 80s. And this is an example of such Duran Duran Rio. Nice. So um, it smells like it's from the 80s too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sniffing but, myself too. Um, <laughs> what, do, no, what do I that, smell? <laughs> I am really, really loving that. It, it just it's, smells, it smells foisty. The, the the small things that improve your quality of life, right? Like yeah, that's just one definitely. small thing in your mm -hmm. office that makes you enjoy the space a little mm. bit more. But where you can just see this ooh, wrong way, where you can see that plant in the corner <gasps> behind me. That's, is that I, a mascara? Um, <clears throat> no idea. It's fake, whatever it is. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's not real. <laughs> I think it is. What, it's a fake one. It, I couldn't tell the difference. It looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is nice. And uh, Louise's yoga mat's behind it. Actually, she comes in here and does Perfect. yoga sometimes. So I, it's a I lovely. I love your she shed. Um, yeah. I, I it's love good, isn't it? It's bright it's and it's I, airy. I love it. But I'm going to move that plant over to the other corner, which is at the okay. minute has just a couple of boxes down there from the new Mac, which I got. But I'm going to put the plant over there and I'm going to get a nice little relaxy chair to sit in the corner yes you always Please. need a relaxy chair i've got yeah. mine in the corner there oh, um yeah That's but i'm one. i think i'm gonna flip it to the other side of the room i have um so i got this off of like facebook marketplace it's a for those who can't see it's an ikea the po the poong or the poang chair um mm. but i also have a wing like an ikea i don't even know the Name, but it's one of their wing, their tall like wing back chairs. Oh, wing back chair, yeah, yeah, that I really, really like. Also from Facebook Marketplace, um, yeah. but it's too heavy for me to carry up the stairs by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried; <laughs> it didn't work. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to break anything myself specifically. So when my parents come back this weekend, um, you're gonna get like, them help you. 
Yeah, I just want to yeah. see how it looks in the space because uh, there is a a footrest here with this one, and the the size of the room isn't huge, but it does create a little bit of like an obstacle to get around, like the mm. bed when it's out. So, just wanted to try and swap the chairs to see if it makes yeah. any difference. Um, yeah, you know, some of these online furniture stores now they have they can scan your room and then you can see what. <laughs> The items look Fit. like in place, can't you? Have you tried that? No, I have not. However, a girlfriend and I have been talking about some of these like design console things too. She's mm. moving and we have a store here called Bed Bath & Beyond that I didn't, it's a like a home goods kind of store. And mm. they do, like somebody can come to your house and give you like a, you know, like a design console and be like, here's some items that would fit in your space or you can do online. Um, and I'm thinking of doing something similar as well, because it's maybe, I think she said the one from Bed Bath & Beyond is maybe like $50 or so. But I was like, oh, to help me decorate, because I don't have an eye for anything. And I can't visualize things really, which has been like a frustration in, mm. I would say, my time in my place. I've been here almost two years. And the walls are still white um because i can't make decisions <laughs> <laughs> my bedroom is different i got that i think mostly sorted but everywhere else in the house it's nothing's been painted so i i struggle with mm. that and my room came together um maybe i'll post a picture on twitter but i did yeah. I, I found a painting um, just kind of like an abstract painting with some colors on it. And that's what gave me the idea to do my room. Like the walls are painted gray, but uh, I did effectively like a canopy strip. So it outlines the bed with paint. And so it's teal and it goes up on my ceiling. So it looks like I have a canopy mm. and then the painting's in the center and it's teal. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. So it's like, that's the, the one inspiration that I had. And it was only because of the painting mm. that I did it, but I can't furniture, I can't do, so I need to, I'm going to employ somebody else's help just to. Oh, that's the way, that's what I would do, employ yeah. somebody else. It's... Yeah, <laughs> I don't, see, this is one of those things that's made my life harder by not just doing mm. <laughs> that. See, anything DIY, I am a disaster, I can't do it, I, I just break things, I end up just breaking things, I'd be like, um, <laughs> be like Mr. Bean, um, Mr. I'd just be clumsy. Bean clumsy like Mr. Bean. He holds a soft spot in my heart. I grew up watching he, Mr. Bean. He's he's great, isn't he? He's yes. so great. Yeah. Yeah, he's just so funny. It's <laughs> Rowan Atkinson, what an absolute legend. I think I thought I saw something that there's a new Mr. Bean movie coming out. Um Oh. I think Twitter told me about yeah. that. Oh, I could have also imagine this i but there was something about mr bean on twitter that's imdb that shit let us see oh man versus b it's a netflix comedy that's maybe what it was right but, uh, yeah Ooh. So maybe... yes this is exactly what it was Man There's versus, already nine a man episodes versus out. B. Yeah, yeah. Wow. A man finds himself at war with a B while house sitting a luxurious mansion. <laughs> and this is a whole entire series. Wait, what? About a man in a B in a house? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also, it's not Mr. <laughs> Bean, but it's it's a different character. But it's uh, but it's, oh. it looks. I assumed it was Mr. Bean from the yeah Rowan Atkinson. Okay, it is not playing the character of Trevor. Um, that looks pretty funny though. That looks. Okay. I mean, he is so good. He is so so yes. so funny. I in back in December, a friend and I went out. Um, we stayed in like a little bed and breakfast to go hiking in the Shenandoah like valley, and. The house had a really cute setup, so we had a living room to ourselves as well. And one of the things that we did was we would just watch Mr. Bean like on YouTube mm. for the evening. Um, my friend, <laughs> my friend is Belgian, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he was like, "Our plan for the night, like, would you be okay with this?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I don't think I've watched Mr. Bean since my childhood." And you know, are you being served? Um, are you being served? Yes. Wow. Yes. I grew. I grew up on that, and I have very yeah. fond memories watching with my dad. Um, oh, Mr. Humphreys. 
Mr. Humphreys. Um, who is yeah. um, Mr. Who Slocum? Is Mr. Slocum. And what is the one where it's the uh, hyacinth bucket? Who is, what's that one? Oh, that is um, Keeping Up Appearances. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. That was one of my favorites. Mrs. Bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> okay i know what i'm doing that's gonna be my fun activity for the weekend then definitely definitely oh we've we've had some great sitcoms in this country over the years M most of them have sadly not aged well in political correctness terms but um but they're still out there you can still enjoy them <laughs> what they are. are you being served so good though i haven't seen that in years i, I watched that either. religiously yeah. oh yeah. I feel like really... anything that like uh, PBS or BBC produces is typically really good. I really enjoy um, mm. like Doctor Who is one of my absolute favorite shows. Awesome, um, awesome. Yeah. So I'm a Whovian. That... <laughs> Whovian, yeah. So is that um, there's a really good YouTube um, channel for Doctor Who, um, mm. which is Who Culture, I think it's called. Culture. And and I and I like a similar one called Trek Culture for Star Trek. But there's some okay. of the same presenters um get get on get on both channels. It's really worth checking out because they, they do some really cool yeah. sort of like top ten moments of this or top ten characters or you know, it's it's really, really cool for, for if you if you're like a, a Whovian geek. But yeah. I, I like I grew up on Doctor Who as well. The 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 old old Doctor Who mm -hmm. before it was like mm -hmm. rebooted in two thousand and five. Mm -hmm. And I've watched a fair few of those, but not all of them. It's something that I always mean to go back and watch the whole lot at some point because I've a missed lot of content. A, it is a lot of content now, yeah, because we've had a lot of doctors since it, it came back in the in, in the two thousands. We've had Christopher Eccleston, we've had yep. what's his name? David Tennant. David Tennant. Yeah. Uh, had... Matthew Matt. Oh, what's Matt his name? Smith. Matt Smith. Yes. Yeah. Um I always want to say Jody Fox. Peter Capaldi. Oh, I, I really fell in love with him. Every time there's yeah. a new doctor, I get very angry because I've gotten attached to the previous doctor. And yeah. then I'm falling in love with like the next one. Um yeah. I have not actually watched the one with the uh it's not Jodie Foster. I forget where we had the first woman doctor. Jodie um, is she Jodie Whittaker? Is, is it name? it's still it's Jody, is it? I keep it I is always Jody, say, yeah. Okay, that's that's yeah. why I was like, why do I keep trying to associate? Because Jodie Foster is an American actress, but it's not her. So mm. yes, I I have not caught up on the past few seasons, so that is also something I need to. Yeah, get definitely, to definitely. But I like Jodie Whittaker actually. Um, she was in a another big show over here before she got the role as Doctor Who, um, is called Broadchurch. Broadchurch. Yes! Yeah, love it, so, loved it, absolutely so loved good. it. It was oh yeah. man, it was it was a very sad like show it um, was yeah yeah but so many good actors in it too like i watched it because david Tennant was in it and oh god of course yeah he was yeah. in it too yep. two doctors in that show yeah and so was um oh what's the woman's name with the brown curly hair that i'm, I'm oh forgetting. she she plays the queen in the crown yes um, uh, uh, um, but she plays in a lot of shows that i like as well and her name just she's, right now. she's in everything right now and she's awesome and quite rightly so because she's awesome um that's gonna bug me i'm gonna have to look it up i'm i'm looking it up right now um yeah. she's like one of the main characters why isn't she popping up oh no um, olivia coleman there we go. There we go. She there did not go. pop up in like the, fr I Googled it and it has like the cast, you know, tile icons in, in yeah, Google. Yeah. And she wasn't even in the top six, which was very wow. surprising. Yeah. Do you not have the um, IMDb app? No, I don't. I don't. I don't TV enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't live without IMDb. If I was like, see someone I'm like, who's that? Who have they been in? Like, who IMDb that? <sighs> Coleman, yeah, I really, I really like her. She is oh, cool. Have you watched? Um, because she's in Fleabag. Have you watched Fleabag? Yes. <laughs> I loved Fleabag, and I was upset mm. that they are not. They weren't going to take it any further. They're not. Yeah, they're no, not doing it anymore. It was only one season, right? Or two seasons. It was very short. Yeah, yeah. There's one. Louise watched it before I did, and says you got to watch this with with me. And this is back when we. We still had our TV and we could watch stuff together. And she said, 
the first episode, the bit that has Louise just rolling on the floor laughing, is she goes to the bank in the first episode and she's hot and she takes the top off to get cool, <laughs> but she doesn't have anything on underneath, underneath. the top. <laughs> Louise thinks that's so weird. She just rolls around. And it's Louise's reaction that I laugh at more of that than, than the actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, great, great shows. Great shows, great actors. You Louis, mentioned yeah. um, that the that the Whovian, um YouTube channel does things like top 10 this. One of your yeah. ideas was to do like top five things about you. So Ooh, do, we, yeah. do we have enough time to do that? Because we're... Let's try it. Let's yeah. try it. Um, it's, a, it's a good job I put some of this in Word because I've now completely forgotten what they were. Um, I, I don't know See, if this will be of in... It's hard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this will be of interest to anybody, but uh, let's let's go through some some things that if you, well, if you even care who I am, uh, that you might not know about me. <laughs> but if you've watched this channel for uh, for long enough and you're here, then then hopefully you do care a little bit. But anyway. Um, I care, Peter. I oh, thank you, Azure. I know you do. So you've, you've, got, you do. you've got at least one fan. And Louise. I hope your kids like you too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think they might. I think I think they, they, might. Think they might. No. Yeah, I hope so. I hope you so. give them rides and 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 feed them. So you know, you've mm, got minimum yeah. four fans. Yeah. So let's start anywhere with number one. One thing that I think is pretty obvious about me, but whenever I tell people about it, they say I never would have realized. I think they're just being kind. Is that I have Tourette syndrome, and. There's lots of different types of Tourette's. There's the one that most people might know is, is where you can't control words that you say. You'll say random words and swear. And uh, Mine is more on the form of twitches and ticks and sniffs and that sort of thing. And if I get really, really anxious or agitated, I will oh, do a quick sort of head tilt twitch like that and um <laughs> to the point that i'm actually starting to damage my neck <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> which is not good i can um because i was on medication for this i went on medication for it um about a year and a half ago now and i didn't think it was doing any good so i thought mm -hmm. um so i came off it um but it then it started getting worse again. So clearly it is doing some good. So I'm going to have to look at that medication again and go back on it. But um, it's something that I've clearly always had all of my life because I've always sort of sniffed and <clears throat> coughed and cleared throat and that sort of stuff. And I remember when I was really, I was probably about, oh, how old would I be? About nine or 10. And we were in a school, a school play and all the parents were coming to see the school play on the evening. And I was, in the choir, I wasn't one of the main parts. I was just singing in the choir. And one of the other mums at the end, she, she went over to, to my mum at the end and said, I, I couldn't pay attention to any of what was going on on the main stage because I couldn't take my eyes off your Peter all of the uh, facial things he was doing. And like, <laughs> so, <laughs> So yeah, I have Tourette's and it's um it's the ticky twitchy ugh, sort of sort of thing and I've got this little neck thing that I do as well and I have no idea why I do it. I've got no control over it. It just sort of happens um and like those of you who know me know that I'm pretty open book about many of my challenges um with mental health and autism in the family and and that sort of thing but that, that's another another thing that um is is on my list of, of of things that i have to deal with with daily so do you know anyone who has Tourette's Azure? i i actually do not know anybody with Tourette's. yeah no i don't and i mean i learned something new today because in the context of Tourette's, what you mentioned first was typically, you know, when people think Tourette's, it's mm. swearing out loud, yeah. you know, uncontrollable, like outbursts. And so that's what I thought. But again, I feel as if there are many folks who have challenges, right? And it's all a spectrum. So mm. I learned something new today. There you go. Fantastic. Sure. 
it no all good i i, I hope i hope others have, have learned something there too it's um okay let's go on to another one the second one is my my phobia my all-time worst fear the thing that just utterly terrifies me do you want to take a guess what it is is it the word moist <laughs> 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 no, it's not moist. Okay, not quite, not quite. Um, is it related to like animals? Yes. Oh. Dogs, maybe? No, not dogs. Okay. okay. That would probably be Oliver's. Oliver's terrified of dogs. Okay. Mine is a creature that you're much less likely to see in this country, thank God. It's snakes. Okay, I'm... that was gonna be my second guess. Yeah, oh. I am absolutely petrified of them to the extent that I can't even look at them. If if I'm watching something on TV or a film or something and a you snake comes on, Ooh. I jump okay. and I have to look away. And again, it's such an irrational fear. I don't know what started it, but I've had it since I was very young. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so frustrating because some of my favorite films are, uh, I love the Indiana Jones films, but there's half of them that I can't watch. <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> You have to censor the snake out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the bit in the middle of Raiders of the Lost Ark where then that well of the souls and there's like snakes everywhere. Um, I have to like hide behind a cushion, kind of. So I've only ever heard that bit. I've never seen that bit. Never seen that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. My mom has a phobia of birds. Mm. She's never had any interactions. A poor interaction with the birds. <laughs> so not... Sometimes they just don't make sense. She saw Alfred Hitchcock's like the bird movie um, or yeah. the birds when she was younger. And that just terrified her enough to, she can't, she cannot do birds. If she sees birds, she runs to, like if we're outside, she'll run to the car or like run mm. inside for her. It's just, it's, it's a fear. Sometimes they don't, they don't make any sense, but they're there. No, they're irrational, aren't they? I it's, would love to know what causes it. Um, I have no desire to get over it people have often you want to try hypnosis or or shock therapy or something like that and no I, I'm, I'm quite happy not liking snakes and I just, we can just keep the snakes away from you and then there you go yeah. right that, that would do me that would do me absolutely fine and fortunately in the uk we, we tend not to, to have many of them although okay. my my one my one fear is that they have become much more popular as exotic pets in houses these days. So I'm, 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 I, I sometimes think, oh my God, on the street where I live, there's probably a massive snake somewhere. And I really don't like the idea of one being that close to me. <laughs> I mean, I don't have anything like against snakes, but I also am okay with not being around them either. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's a bit more rational than my extreme yeah. fear of them. I wouldn't <laughs> not... have one as a pet. <laughs> mm. yeah no no okay. I, I i can't see the appeal well i can't see them at all because i can't look at them <laughs> <laughs> we need to anytime there's a snake we just need to like pixelate we need to get you some glasses like pixelate yeah a snake. yeah i um <laughs> and i'm not alone there's there's gazillions of people in the world who have the same phobia, and, oh, and it's so frustrating because we, we, I mean, you can't cater for every phobia in the world, but I really wish when going to the cinema they could like warn you there will be snakes <laughs> in this film. Warning. Content warning: um, snakes. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> so so if you're watching something and and any time. Um, they go somewhere that is like deserty or sandy or jungly. I'm immediately on edge. I'm like, like oh god, is there going to be a snake? And what's Do worse, is these... snakes bother you? No, not at all. Okay, okay. Just the real ones. Just the... And <laughs> what's even worse is those movies where they turn up randomly in places where they shouldn't, where you think, oh, we're in a nice sort of suburban area here in a, in a house and like uh, with, with there's not going to be snakes here. And you're not, you're... and there's this film with a good example of this is a film with Hugh Jackman in it called, I forget what it's called now, but he opens up. He, He's a policeman or something like that. And he goes into the house of this serial killer or some kind of criminal. And he finds this suitcase in there and he's searching the place and he opens the suitcase and it's full of snakes. And I'm uh, like, ah! yeah. no, I mean, that would make, be enough to make me jump to not a suitcase full of snakes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, geez, come on. Really? If there's a desert or a jungle, I know it'll be on guard, but right. you're like, I'm in a, a house with a, with a suitcase. I don't mm -hmm. expect to be seeing no snakes. So no. <laughs> 
No, you know, I've never seen Snakes on a Plane either with Samuel Jackson, but it's very clear like what mm. it's about. I would never want to be in a plane with snakes. So I'm not going to I'm not going to watch that one either. Um, no, definitely yeah. not. Definitely not. <laughs> oh, so that's another one. How many have we done? We've done two. Two. We've done two. Um, what's another good one? Um, I'm looking at these now. I think they're really boring. I'm um, assuming there's more interesting things about me than this. The, the next one is I'm a vegetarian. Yay. Good for me. <laughs> no, I love this because when Eliza was on, Eliza Benitez, it was Recipe Club up in here. And That's I, right, yeah. Yes. So I, Eliza and I trade a lot of recipes because uh, I was like, we can make this vegan. I love it because it gives me ideas for stuff. So when you mm. start cooking, when you and Louis start cooking things, put it on Twitter. Yeah. I'm always interested. We, we will do. We will do. That's great. Because, no, I got a lot out of when we talked to Eliza and we, we started sharing the rest. And she's shared a ton on Twitter yeah. since. And it's been great. So that cauliflower one she put on looked awesome. That one really awesome. On my on my uh, to eat list and to mm. make list. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm the least likely vegetarian you would ever meet. Anyone who knew me years ago before I became vegetarian, I've been vegetarian for about five years now. Mm -hmm. But before that, I just I just loved chicken. I absolutely mm -hmm. loved chicken. I just could eat a bucket of KFC or a um or a McDonald's um chicken sandwich or something like that. I just oh, I just love chicken. George, our oldest, he still gets a KFC because he's 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 still a meat eater, meat eater, and that's absolutely fine. We're not the sort of parents who's mm -hmm. we're vegetarian, so you must be too. Um, and I must admit, when he gets a KFC delivered and I'm unpacking it for him, we're like, oh, I still really like the thought of this, but um, but I don't eat meat anymore. So <laughs> I have to say, one of my favorite there's <laughs> 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 there is maybe this is a fun fact about me. There is a Thai place um, that I went to with a friend of mine for lunch one day mm. that sold me on their to I love tofu pad Thai. Mm. I only order that at this restaurant and on, was it Uber Eats? I think it was Uber Eats or DoorDash, one of the two apps. Like during the pandemic, I was ordering, you know, from there. And I am now one of the top like 3% of customers, according to Uber, ordering from this place which i thought was hilarious because the only thing that i order from there is this one dish mm. um but their tofu pad thai is so oh, wow. good oh yeah oh i love tofu absolutely love it oh, it's so good so it good. is isn't it you can do so much with tofu yeah now i'm hungry yeah you you really can do so much with tofu um okay random fact number four <laughs> I am a complete um, history buff or, or um, geek for all things about the Titanic. The Oh, specifically the Titanic. Yeah, the Ooh. Titanic itself, the story of the Titanic, everything to do with it. I can, um, I can tell you pretty much everything you want to know about Titanic. Um, the fact that it was one of three identical ships or near identical ships um because there, there was the olympic then the titanic then the britannic there were three ships that were almost identical mm. um but very did the other two ever set sail after the yes titanic? oh they did okay well okay. the olympic was launched first um uh. before titanic and it's not nearly as famous as titanic for obvious right. reasons but it was the first of of that class of ship i did not <laughs> know that so <clears throat> and out of the three of them the olympic was the only one that survived so titanic we all know what happened to that struck an iceberg and now sits at the bottom of the atlantic ocean um and britannic the third sister ship which was launched a little later was during world war one it was requisitioned into the military service oh and okay and it struck a mine off the coast of greece and also sank so <clears throat> titanic uh everything about it all the conspiracy theories about it as well because there are some there are some silly conspiracy conspiracy theories out there which are fun to think about but when you analyze them they couldn't possibly have happened because there are one in particular is that they deliberately sank the ship as an insurance fraud and it wasn't actually the titanic they sank it was the olympic and they switched the ships yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry the look <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, the my my brow is very furrowed on this end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, I was like, okay, I'm following, and I was like, oh no, I'm not following anymore. Yeah. I don't think that I don't think that holds water. Pun intended. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
But there are people who genuinely believe this happened. There are people who've written books about it, and they will, no matter what evidence is put towards them of how implausible this is, they're like, no, no, I don't buy it. They yeah. could have easily switched these ships. Like that would involve changing the names on the side, changing all the stationery That's of all a lot the of effort uh, the, on the plates because lots of stuff was branded to the particular ship so no way it happened but there's, there's people out there who are convinced it did they're convinced <laughs> you know what yeah. my tin foil hat is packed up somewhere in a box um i'll extract <laughs> it and come up with something new <clears throat> yeah but what a story though i mean there been so many movies about it i mean the most famous one's the james cameron one but there's five or six or seven older movies about it black and white ones really good stories and i'm amazed they haven't done another one actually because wow. the james cameron one was back in 97 something like that yeah yeah that i mean <clears throat> that was the one that honestly that's the only one that i knew about yeah that's, that's now probably... yeah there's a whole list of films about the titanic wow. yeah there's um there's um ooh, what's the most famous black and white one it's uh a night to remember it's called a night to, a night to remember With... <laughs> starring kenneth moore <clears throat> um and there's various other ones there's this ridiculous one which is kind of funny it was made in the early early 80s and it's like a fictional story and it's called raise the titanic and it's what, what you would think it is it's about this team who try and bring it back to the surface and it was before the wreck was actually discovered and the and they found out that it's actually in two pieces so it, you couldn't raise it <laughs> but uh but no but there you go that you can you can probably tell from that that i'm so geeky about all things titanic i'm just fascinated with it i can tell you the minute differences between all the ships and the... maybe we need a whole like titanic episode because i'm Ooh, i'm yeah. very interested i'm very interested. i would love that um this is probably the my sort of <clears throat> autism in, in my genes coming out as well the fixation with certain subjects which is something that runs in 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 certain people with autism it definitely is true of me if you in engrossed in a subject if you're invested in a subject you're invested really keenly really fully you just want to absorb everything about it and um I, I just love it i just immerse myself in all things titanic to the fact that i i could name you the whole command crew of the ship the captain the first officer the holy the, moly okay yeah that's, it's, it's, that's, it's it's that level of geekness that's history buff. <laughs> my my boyfriend really loves like ancient roman and greek history and mm. he I mean, for his, same thing for him. He can name everybody in like the family trees, and he loves Alexander the Great in particular, and wow. rattles off all of these facts. And I'm like, tell, tell, tell me more, because as he's telling it, it sounds like a a really wild story. And he's like, honestly, that's what makes it so great. Is history mm. is so wild that whatever happens, like it happened. But if you tried to throw this into a fictional storyline, people would be like, "There's two. There's plot holes here. Like there has to be. You know, people wouldn't believe it." Um, but apparently, Game of Thrones is based off of Alexander the Great, um, which I oh. had no idea. And they're like, no, "Yeah, but the pieces not. of games Game of Thrones are based off of real historical events," um, which was like, "That's kind of cool." Uh, but yeah. yeah, for him, you get him started talking on it. And he's like, how on earth? Because I guess Alexander the Great was like entombed in honey somewhere in the middle of the desert. He's like, where on earth do you find that much honey? And I was like, I, don't, <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> it's like they entombed him in like in honey because they were in the middle of the desert. And he's like, how on earth do you feed like an art, like an army and 20,000 horses in the desert? And he, I mean, it's, it's very exciting for me. Yeah. I love listening to it because it sounds so... Yeah, out of how the box, right? the logistics of it. You, you, it gets you thinking, doesn't it? How on earth did they do these things? Yes, how how <laughs> did they do it? And he's like, the truth is stranger than fiction. And he's like, and that's yeah. why it, he's like, but you, it really is. It is what it is. Anyway, sorry, yeah. that was. So I I love people who are history buffs because I love listening to it. Um, yeah, but it's not something I don't I don't know if I would be able to. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, just I love other people who love history. Cause yeah, yeah. I like history in general as well. I mean, there's lots of er periods in history that I, I, I love. To, I like British royalty is another thing, like, especially around the Tudor time, sort of Henry VIII and all that. And um, but but yeah, Titanic's probably the biggest biggest area of fascination for me. But um, ooh, what's this? Emails. Ooh. Just my just my barber emailing me, telling me that my beard balm is in stock. Ooh, that, lovely. Uh, Ooh. Cool. <laughs> what scented beard balm do you use? Uh, this particular one is tobacco and mandarin. 
Ooh. Which is really nice. Ooh. Really nice. This is an this is an oil, in fact, not a balm. Um, and um, a, a balm is very good for controlling, sort of holding the beard in like place. Like flyaways, whereas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas the the oils, um, um, the oils are really nice if you have like a late nighttime shower and you come out of the shower and you put a nice oil on, it makes you feel really fresh. It's like yeah, my 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 hair too. I like. I do less scented oils in my hair, but the idea of mm. oils in general, I really love and scents yeah. like orange and sandalwood has been my oh, latest nice. like scent that I really dig into. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Cool. Oh, I love, I love a good smell. <laughs> Me too. That's what I think that's yeah. one of the like ritual things that I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, it's different scents. Like there is, I use a body butter from the body shop and they're mm. just shea. Like scent is just so lovely. Like I look forward to moisturizing in the morning and. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. Just smelling good is a nice thing. I love like candles. Um, I want to get like a, like an aromatherapy diffuser. Cause I also. Nice. Would, like, I have, um a humidifier and it has a little space for like essential oils that you can like put on a, mm. a little cotton thing and you put it in. Yeah. And I was using it cause I had a wasp infestation in my house Ooh. back in May and mm. supposedly like eucalyptus, spearmint, lemongrass scents keep it away. And I didn't realize how much I really enjoyed having my house smell like mint. It was a very like <laughs> nice. kind of thing. So I, yeah, I hone it on scents and I'm trying to elevate that is part of like the the homey process too. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. When I was at school, my religious education teacher, he always used to burn incense in the classroom. You probably couldn't do that now for health and safety mm -hmm. reasons, but, and we, we used to call them joss sticks um, joss rather than sticks. incense. I've never heard that is, before. No, I, I think it's, purely a, might just be a British thing but I used to love the smell of them and every time I think about it I think to myself I really would love to get some for in here you should I think I will you I should think I will. Yeah. yeah yeah okay That'd be really cool. you our homework is to buy something that's going to make our space smell good so I might get like Definitely. a mini aromatherapy diffuser for my desk and yeah. you get the incense oh yeah I'm definitely gonna do that what a shame that we can't share smells over the power of the internet. <laughs> that would be, that's the next thing. I think it has to be, right? Because as technology keeps advancing, we've done 3D. And I'm like, I yeah. could live without 3D. That's fine. But what I yeah. would love is to be able to smell an atmosphere in a show. It would be great, wouldn't it? Like a pizza yeah. ad comes on a TV mm. or like a family's Ooh, eating yeah. dinner. I want, to, I want to know <clears> what they're eating for dinner. And yeah. Oh, smell a vision. Love it. <laughs> there's, I want to say it's at, um, there's a theme park in Florida. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was Orlando's, one of the Universal, I think it's Universal Studios. Mm. I think it's the, there's a ride, like a Shrek ride. Um, yeah. And they had 4D. And this was like years and years ago that I went on it, but it was uh, like you had 3D, like you wore goggles and you're on the ride and it's spinning you, but then you could also smell and feel things from it. So on mm. the screen, if there's rain, right, you're getting splashed with a little bit of water. Um, may, I think that that might next in home is what we need is the addition of like scent. Homework. Home. I like that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Okay. Fantastic. But uh, how many have I given you? I've given it four, haven't I? We've had okay. vegetarian, Tourette's, snakes, Titanic. We'll do one more and then we'll wind up. Um, I think because uh, Louise will be calling me in soon because nearly sh all of us shower time. I should be getting nervous <laughs> that I'm not back. <laughs> um, I once broke my humerus and this arm really badly. Ooh. It was not fun. How did you do that? When did that happen? When that that happened in... 2017, about five years ago now. Oh, it seems, that's recent. Yeah, it seems really strange that it's that long ago now, actually, because it seems like yesterday. And I was on holiday with the family, with Louise and the boys and Louise's parents in a little country cottage in North Yorkshire, which is a couple of hours from where we live. And um, <clears throat> really, really peaceful, 
lovely place. I'd never broken a bone in my life, nothing. Um, and I got up one morning and went out to play football on a, with George because he'd like to have a little bit of a kick about, can we go and have a bit of a kick? And said, yeah, okay. I went to this little play area, <clears throat> which is a short walk down the road. And it was a wet morning. I had stupid shoes on, oh. uh, con Converse oh. type, type shoes, and a really poor decision. Um, and we're kicking this ball about on this tarmac surface in this play park. And George kicks the ball to me. We've been playing for a little while. He kicks the ball to me, and it goes a bit off course. And I run to get it, and somehow I slip over, and somehow I don't break my fall. I land right on my arm. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, and crunch. Uh, I'm, ugh, I, I'm wincing. I when people talk about injuries, <clears throat> that it, yeah. I feel something in my body. Um, oof. Mm. I got I got some PTSD about it to this day, actually, because it was <sighs> I can remember the I can remember the sensation, I can remember the sound, oh and I can remember God. this mm. I can remember the scream that I let out as well. I I, <sighs> I li literally screamed, and I, and then I jumped up thinking. As you do, you're more embarrassed than anything to begin yeah. with. And I'm all right. I'm all right. And no, then I realized, okay. actually, I'm not. <laughs> <No>. and... <laughs> Ooh, so oh. poor George, poor little George. I mean, he was only about, George is 15 now, so he'd be about 10 at the time. <clears throat> and I said, I, I somehow managed to go into dad mode and keep myself calm. And I said, George, I've done something really bad to my arm. Can you reach in my pocket? and get my phone out and we'll call call your mum and let her know we're coming back and I'm gonna to need to go to hospital. Um so he does he does that and my father in law I mean it's only about a ten minute walk back to the place we're staying. Um and my father in law hops in the car and comes to meet us halfway. And as we're walking along back to the place, I, I just become typically British here. We you know we're so stiff up the lip and cope with anything and uh, we walk past this there's this couple walking the other way, um, just out from morning walk. And I walk past them with my arms sort of spasming and hanging off. And I just say, morning. <laughs> and I just like, I don't, I don't think to ask for help. I'm like, um, <laughs> can, can you help me? My arm is like literally spasming out of control here. And I'm in such a lot of pain. But all I say is morning <laughs> and, keep, and keep on walking. <laughs> <laughs> so British. <laughs> oh, Peter. <laughs> I know, I know. And then we get down and my father-in-law arrives. We hop in the car. We drive George back home. He goes in with his mum and, and Oliver. <clears throat> and then my parents and my mother and father-in-law, they drive me to the hospital because we're in the middle of nowhere. Um, an ambulance would take God knows how long. So we decide mm -hmm. to drive to the hospital. It takes about, I don't know, 30 minutes to get there, 30, 40 minutes. And every bump we go over, it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I get to the hospital, somehow they get my jacket off. I don't know how they manage that. They give me some painkillers would you like some painkillers yes yes i would i would like some painkillers yes please um <clears throat> and then they take me in for x-ray and some of they have to cut me out of my t-shirt um which was a shame because it was a really nice star wars rogue one t-shirt which i really loved and i hadn't had it long but it was ruined you um, should too. i should um but they do the x-ray and then after they've done the x-ray that's when i get the good drugs they, they couldn't give me too much until i had the x-ray then they gave me um, gas and air and liquid morphine. And I got to tell you, my, my arm was hanging off, but I have literally you never been happier me. in my life. Never been happier in my life. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So funny. And I just went so silly with it. And, and, and I just utterly loved everyone, all of the medical staff attending yes. to me. I just started seeing how great I thought there was. And there was this male <laughs> nurse there called Keith. I remember that much about him. And I was like, Keith, you're brilliant, man. You're so good. You fixed me up. And there's this person in the next bed. I had no idea what this person was in for. I said, oh, Keith's looking after you. You'll be all right. You're in good hands. You'll be fine. Like, I just went Hospital super silly. Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had... Um... <clears throat> 
gas and air one time when I had mm. my wisdom teeth removed um, a number of years ago. Yeah. And apparently I asked for my wisdom teeth to keep as a souvenir in a jar. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember this, but my mom, she was like, you were <laughs> way too funny, but you should have asked, apparently I should have asked for my teeth before they took them out and put them in the biohazard bag. So uh, if anybody wants to keep their wisdom teeth, remember to ask before they hmm. put you on. There you gas. go. That's a good tip for me. Cause mine are going to catch up with me eventually. Cause I've been ignoring mine for years. Every time I go to the dentist, he says, we're probably going to have to do something about these eventually, Peter, but but not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I got lucky and they took them out when I was like 18. And I think yeah. they were like growing sideways into oh, like, yeah. my jaw. Not and they were like, you, you can't. You, they're mm. gonna, it's going to shift all your teeth. So Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. That's my five facts. Um, and I had this massive arm cast on for a few days. And then... We, we kept we, we stayed on holiday we went back to the holiday house and my family said do you want to go home as hell no no I want, finish, what vacation? I want to finish my holiday so we finished the holiday and then we went back to the same hospital a couple of days later to take that massive arm cast off and get me in like a an easier to wear arm brace with a sling and that that was even worse than the first hospital mm -hmm. experience because the, they didn't really tell me what was going to happen they took the pot off and my arm sort of like re-broke and it was oh. and, and then they put this arm brace on and then i had to wear that for like seven months um That's a actually i think i might have we might have talked about this a little bit before because you were talking about your special bra that you want to get the gravity bra with elon musk weren't you and i was <laughs> You know what? I don't think we actually talked about. Did we talk about that on the podcast, or was it just us? Talking? Not on the not on the podcast. No, and we and if you don't want this out there, we can edit this out. No, 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 no. So. This is <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this just over text, and I said the one the one thing that I could empathize with you on is that when I had that arm brace on, I had to That's wear this right. like strap thing around my up a chest for yes. months and I couldn't take it off so that's the closest I can empathize with having to wear a bra <laughs> yes uh for the list for the listeners <laughs> we had this conversation about where like billionaires could invest their money uh kind of thing <laughs> and I was like the perfect bra still has not been formulated and a girlfriend and I actually were talking about this before that I started talking about this with Peter, but she's like, yo, like what I, what I would give to have an anti-gravity bra. And I was like, oh, you know yeah. what? You're right. You know, the, the man like, oh, yeah, could help us out, it. but the choose to <laughs> anti-gravity bra, we, that's where the research money needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. You would think a Musk could spare a few dollars for that. Just a just a few for research that's that's it and it would massively change things worldwide yeah it really would it really would but, uh, <laughs> anywho i tell you what this has been so much fun and i could literally <laughs> keep going but i can uh, i know I'm, i'll get in so much trouble if i don't go and do my, my you're fine because i have to go to i have to go to a meeting i have to drive yeah. half an hour to go to a meeting oh so. my god i was i was forget the time difference yeah you're five hours behind still, me right yeah it's still um, so yeah work day. but i want to do this again though for sure this has been yes. so good and I, what i want to do i want to do the sort of british <laughs> slang phrases and test you on those to see how many you know okay. but um we'll, we'll do that next time and maybe next time you could think of some things that people might not know about you we could we could rev mm. turn the tables next time if you would be up for it Good. yeah we could do we can do that I can't I couldn't do that when you originally suggested the 10 things I was like ooh, I mm. I can't do 10 I don't think I can do 10 five that was too much five yeah. I can I can do so I'll, I'll think on I'll think on my five let's do it let's okay. do it awesome well it is it has been so good to catch up with you and just have a chat we would have done this anyway but we figured why not share this with our viewers um our our unplanned uh banter and, and catch up and um we'll be back with something soon i might do another demo soon i've got a few planned because i did a poll on twitter about that what what people want to see so i'm going to do one soon and uh and we'll get me back with some more guests soon as well yeah, and we will <clears throat> and um and yeah but um hey many congratulations to cat and craig we 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 love you and um we're so happy for you and can't wait to to see you um and hear all about your time in vegas and uh and 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 rue <clears throat> our, our good 
good friend Rua, hope you're doing well and we hope to see you back soon as well but um anywho uh let's i keep on saying anywho isn't it yeah, i like that on. word yeah it's good isn't it but anywho today again anywho. <laughs> let's wind this one up let's put this one to bed <laughs> and i'll let you go on get on with the rest of your day but you take care as you lovely you to talk to you and yeah. we'll, we'll talk again real soon thanks yeah. for listening everyone you know the drill by now you know where to find us we're on twitter we're on youtube blah 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 blah, blah. go find us blah, blah, blah. see you later blah. yeah take care Bye. Bye.